last time we got our player box in, we have our animations working, well, for running. Now we need to get our attacking animations in. So this can get a little more complicated, but let's go ahead and get some things set up. First off, we want to go over to our objects layout, double click, scroll on down to sprite, new sprite, and this will be ATK underscore box. This will be our attack box. So when we attack, this is what's actually gonna register. So we will, double, we will click, come on in, resize this. We want this to be 16 by 16. Scroll on in. We can make this any color we want. I uh, will go ahead and just choose a weird turquoise or blue or whatever color that is. It's a cyan mostly. We will go and change the bounding box here. So if we go to our edit collision polygon, this is a little large. We want it to be a little smaller because we don't want it to overlap anything. So what I'm gonna do is select, you can select one point, hold control, select another point, and then I can just use my arrow keys to go up to. Um, and we're just gonna do that all the way around. And the last two on the top. Perfect. And then we will set our origin point to the top left. Again, you can right click, do top left, or hit seven on the number pad of your keyboard. And that's pretty much all we need to do there. This won't have any animation. This won't actually even be seen. So if you really want to, you can go ahead in, this is something I like to do a lot. Let's just do it for fun. We can change the alpha here. So we have red, green, blue. Um, we, you can also change it to hex or anything you like. I, I usually have it on hex, so in the future, if it's on hex, that's why. Um, it's just a different way of selecting colors. Let's go ahead and set this alpha to, let's go with 150, and use the paint bucket tool to fill that in. So now we'll have a little bit of transparency so we can see if it overlaps something in the future when we're working with it. And we can go ahead and close this. I will set this next to my character here and these things I'm going to go ahead and for this layout just change this to 16 by 16 like I did on our main game layout and snap to grid. That just makes these line up a little nicer for me. Okay, let's make sure we hit save and now we have to actually code in the attack animation. So at the moment we have our inputs. We don't have anything for attack because our movements are all happening if the player is not attacking. So let's handle putting in our player attack input. So we wanna have this be separate from this instance here. So we can go ahead and select the whole group up here and hit B for a new blank sub event. That'll put it down below. And if we want, we can go ahead, select this, hit Q, and we will do attack. Select this one, hit Q, and do movement, just so we can keep ourselves a little bit organized. Q is just a comment. This doesn't affect the actual code. It just makes it easier for you to see where you are and what you're doing. Okay, so this one should be pretty simple. All we have to do is double click, keyboard, key is down, space, done. And then we will go add action, player box, scroll down to set boolean, set boolean attack to true. So that's pretty simple. That's all we got to do there. So now we're just going to piggyback off up here where if player attack is not true, if it is true, we set all of these to false. We will go ahead and hit B for a new blank sub event, double click, and we will check player box. And we want to make sure the player box is not moving before we start the attack animation. So we will select is moving and we will invert it because the problem is if we just instantly set, us, set ourselves to the attack animations when we press the attack button, if we are in the middle of moving between two cells of the grid, which is a 16 by 16 movement, if we are on you know pixel 10, we're gonna start attacking while we're still sliding across. So we wanna make sure we're not moving. So this won't trigger until after we actually finish the movement. And then we wanna trigger this once. So we're gonna hit C to add another condition, system, and you can start typing this in, but trigger once while true. And all we have to do is add an action, player art, scroll on down to set value, and we will set the value of anim to quote ATK, close quote, and done. So now if we hit spacebar, we should actually attack. Let's take a look and see. We hit spacebar, we attack but we're glitching out all over the place. So this shows me two things that are wrong. One I knew was gonna happen, which is we have no way of stopping attacking at this moment. Attack is now true infinitely and we can't move. The glitchiness though is something that I made a mistake on. So let's come in and that was the attack right. And if we look at our origin point here, here's our problem. Why is it down here at the bottom? So I am on frame 
So it is in the correct place on all of these frames except frame zero. So I must have at some point clicked in the wrong position. So we want this actually to be at x negative three, y zero. Let me just fix that negative three, y of zero. Let's check these ones to make sure these are all in the same spot. Okay, good. So now it should just attack infinitely the moment I attack. Let's try it doing right again. Excellent. So that's how we want that to work at the moment. Now we need to check to see if the attack animation is done. So the way we can do this is we only want it to attack once and then kind of reset everything and check to see if we're attacking again. So if spacebar is still held down, it'll keep attacking. If it's not, it'll just set it to the idle. So we want to check to see if the animation is finished. So we can go ahead and let's go ahead and make a new group here. We will call this player attack. Let's go ahead and hit B for a new blank sub event. And we are going to check. So double click for the condition player art. And we're going to check for on animation finished. Now we have four different animations for attacking because we have it for the four different directions. So we can go ahead and do open quote and we can see all of our different options here. We will do attack down. Sure. And click done. Now we're going to make this an or statement the same way we did before, but let's go ahead and make sure you have just the condition selected again, not the whole thing, just the condition copy paste. Oh, it won't let us move that because it is a type of condition that is on a trigger. So when you see this little arrow here, that means it's a trigger and you can't have two things that have to trigger at the same time. But if we hit Y on the keyboard to turn this whole block into an or block, now we can copy paste without a problem. So if that did happen to you, first thing you got to do is just hit Y and turn it into an or block and you should be okay. Now let's go ahead and change this one. We don't want this to be attack down. We want to now go with Let's go with attack left. Sure. We just need to get all four in here. So I'm just going to put in both and we will do attack right and attack up. So we're just going to check to see if all at once those are finished, we want to have something happen. So what we're going to have happen is we are going to set player art, go down to set value of anim, and we will set this to open quote idle, close quote. Then we are going to wait a very short amount of time. So add action, system, start typing in wait, and we got a whole bunch of options. We're just going to use a normal wait here, and we're going to wait 0 0.1 seconds, and then we will add one more action, player box, and we're going to go ahead and then go down to set boolean, attack to false. So that means if we save, and let's see if this all works. Let's hit preview. We can come in, we now move. If we attack, it happens once, we go back to idle, and we can keep moving again. So we can attack left, attack right, attack up, and attack down. Okay, so now we just need to make the actual attack box show up so we can register if we actually attacked anything. We go back to game, select player attack, hit B for a new blank sub event that is not childed underneath this one, and we will go ahead and double click. And we will check to see if player box is attacking. So come on down to his Boolean set, attack. This time we're going to leave it true. So if the player box attack is true, so we'll hit B for a new blank sub event. And then we need to check to see what frame we're on, also which direction we're facing. So we will check to see compare frame, player art, compare frame. If frame is equal to one, so if we're attacking and the animation frame is equal to one, since when we're playing, when we're attacking, we always go into the attack animation. When the frame is one, we then need to check to see which direction we're facing. So we'll go B for a new blank sub event. So we will double click and we need to check to see what animation is playing. So we're going to compare is playing and we will check to see if we are on attack down. Pull this out just a little bit. So if player is attacking down, we want to spawn the attack box in the frame below the player. So the way we do that is we will now add an action system, create object. The object we want to create is attack box. We will create it on the player layer and where we want to create it is according to the player box in a different direction. So when it's facing down, we want the box because it's in the top left. We want to have it up here 16 pixels below the actual player box. So for X, all we need to do is go player box, 
dot x because we don't want it to be on to the left or right so we want to have it in the same position and for y we will do player box dot y and because of the way computers work with zero zero of the actual layout being at the top left moving down is actually a positive so we will spawn this at the player box y plus 16. so let's just see if that actually works so let's go ahead and go over to game so if I attack right, nothing happens. Attack left, nothing happens. If I attack down, hey, we got a box. Cool. But it stays there. That's not exactly what we want. Uh, there's still some more to do. So we can actually do this for each direction. But one thing I want to add in here is something I actually, we also need to add in. So we'll go to player box and we're going to add a couple instance variables. Actually, just one, really. So we will do an instance variable of hit underscore dir. And we can go ahead and make that a string okay so now when we create this we also want to set the hit direction because later when it hits a rock we need to know which direction to have the rock move so we will go add action attack box set value of hit string of hit dir to open quote down perfect so now that'll actually set it the way we want it so let's go ahead and do this for the other four directions. So we will copy this whole thing over. Attack down. Let's double click and we will make this attack right. We will set the hit dir to right. Double click on where we're creating the object. And now we don't want to create it on the Y anymore because now we want to have it to the right. So we can go ahead, delete that part. And now we want to do plus 16 on the X. Now we can copy and paste this whole thing again. Let's change this to left. So if we're attacking left, we now need to do negative 16 on the X. Double click, change this to left. And last but not least, we will be attacking up. And this time we're going back to the Y. I probably should have done this before. My apologies. It will be negative 16 because that will happen. That will be spawning above the player box. And we need to change its direction to up. And real fast, while we're here, since we don't want to have these boxes staying on permanently, what we're going to do is come up here when the animation is over, add an action, attack box, and we will just go to destroy. So you can just start typing it in and destroy and we will put that before the wait. So we will click save and I just closed my game. Let's reopen that. Hit play. So now our player is here. It will move. He will move around left, right, up and down. If I hit attack, he attacks to the right. He attacks to the left. He attacks up and attacks down and the attack box disappears after the end of the attack so we are all set for what we need perfect and that's everything for getting the attack in for today we will make some changes to it later of course but for the moment i think we're all good thanks for watching and i'll see you next time